Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk about tangent planes, what they are, and how to find them. And so to start off, a tangent plane is really just the three-dimensional version of a tangent line, and that's a concept we should be pretty familiar with at this point. And so the overall uh, idea of a tangent plane is the tangent planes are gonna be the planes that best approximate our three-dimensional surface given by a function like z is equal to f of x comma y, and these are gonna be the best approximation for our two variable function at or near a given point. And that's the point where we create our tangent plane around. So remember in single variable calculus, tangent lines were a pretty big deal. And the idea is if we had a nice differentiable function at some point, then we could zoom into the graph of our function at that point, And our graph would eventually resemble a straight line. And our tangent line is essentially that straight line that best resembles our function at a given point. Well, now we're working with two variable functions and we have a three-dimensional version of that same scenario going on. So now we have a nice differentiable three-dimensional surface here and we pick a point. And then if we zoom in on our surface closer and closer to that point, eventually we get close enough to where it appears our surface is flat. And that flat surface can be approximated by a plane. And that is our tangent plane for our function at a given point. And so here's a couple little animations from GeoGebra that are uh, illustrating this. So here we can see our single variable function. And so now we have a single point on the curve of our function. And we're gonna go ahead and graph the tangent line to our curve at that point. And now if we zoom in into our picture at that point, we can see that as we get closer and closer, the difference between our function and this tangent line is getting smaller and smaller. And our interpretation of that is our tangent line is essentially approximating our function. And here's that same process in picture, but done in three dimensions with a two dimensional surface and a tangent plane. So there's our point of interest, graphing the tangent plane on our surface. Now we're zooming in and eventually it looks like our surface and the tangent plane are the same thing. That's only true when we're close enough to our point. Okay, so now we have a rough idea of what tangent planes are. They're just these planes that best approximate our surface at a given point and kind of play a lot of the same roles and have the same applications that tangent lines did for our single variable functions. The next question is, how do we find the equation of a tangent plane? And well, we already know what the equation of a general plane looks like from our earlier work with vectors. Remember, earlier we saw that we can write the equation of a plane as the constant a times the quantity x minus x naught plus the constant b times the quantity y minus y naught, plus the constant c times the quantity z minus z naught, and all that added up and would equal zero. So remember x naught, y naught, and z naught were representing coordinates of a point that our plane went through, and a, b, and c were like the components of the normal vector to our plane. And so don't need to worry, we aren't gonna find these values of a, b, and c representing the normal vector to our plane using any cross products or anything like that. There's gonna be a much simpler way using some partial derivatives. But before we see how that's gonna work, let's go ahead and rearrange our equation just a little bit. And we're gonna rearrange this general equation for a plane that we saw earlier and solve it for z. So it's representing like z is equal to a function of x and y, how we're now kind of working with our multivariable functions. All right, so well, if we want to solve our equation for z, the first thing we're gonna to have to do is move these other quantities to the other side of our equation. So we'll have to subtract a times the quantity x minus x naught and b times the quantity y minus y naught from each side. Then to really isolate uh, z, we're gonna have to then divide both sides or everything by c. And then we can add that constant term of z naught to each side to really finish isolating and solving for z. So just to recap what we did going from our first line here to our second line, we took our previous version of the equation of a general plane and we've solved it for z to help write it as a function of two variables being x and y. And the reason we're doing this is we're trying to figure out another way to find the values of a, b, and c here instead of having to find a normal vector and it's gonna be done using partial derivatives. And the last little observation we need that helps us find the values of a, b, and c using partial derivatives is to remember, well, a tangent plane is supposed to be approximating our function at the point. And so that means it should have the same partial derivatives of our function at that point. All right, so our tangent plane needs to have the same first partial derivatives as our function does at the point where we are creating our tangent plane around. And so that means if we have the equation for our plane here, and we also have a similar equation for our tangent plane, 
then if we take the partial derivative with respect to x of the equation for our tangent plane, it should give us uh, the same partial derivative with respect to x as our function at the point we're creating the tangent plane around. So this is the general equation for our plane. And so what happens if we differentiate it with respect to x? Well, if we take the derivative of z with respect to x, we're getting the partial derivative of z with respect to x, and that's going to be equal to on the right-hand side. Well, let's see. Remember, when we are taking a partial derivative with respect to x, all the other variables are treated as constants. So our only other variable here is y. z naught is a constant. So all this stuff really disappears. That negative x naught is also going to disappear because it is a constant. So really, when we take the derivative of z with respect to x, we're really only taking the derivative of negative a over c times x. And well, the derivative of that with respect to x is just going to be negative a over c. And so we've taken the partial derivative with respect to x of our equation for our plane, and we saw that it gave us negative a over c. If this is the equation of our tangent plane, then it has to satisfy the fact that the partial derivative of the equation for our tangent plane with respect to x has to agree with the partial derivative of the function we are approximating at the point of interest. And so that means the derivative of our plane's equation with respect to x, which was equal to negative ac, has to be equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of our function at the point of interest, or the point where we are creating the tangent plane around. Similarly, if we take the partial derivative of z with respect to y, then we're differentiating our plane's equation with respect to y, and so well, kind of similarly, the x and the z pieces are constants, and their derivatives are all zero and disappear. If we take the derivative of the y pieces that remain, we're just going to get negative b over c. And so negative b over c is the coefficient in our plane's equation that represents the partial derivative of the plane's equation with respect to y. And in order for this to be the tangent plane, then this has to be the same as the partial derivative of the function we are approximating with with respect to y at the point of interest x naught comma y naught. And so now with just a little bit of movement of some of these quantities and some relabeling, we can write down the equation for our tangent plane using partial derivatives. We're going to have z is equal to z naught. I'm just moving that constant term in the front over here. And then instead of writing that next piece as negative a over c times the quantity x minus x naught, we know negative a over c is going to be the same as the partial derivative of our function with respect to x evaluated at the point x naught y naught. We're going to multiply that by x minus x naught and then add a similar term for the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So that negative b over c is going to become f sub y at x naught comma y naught and we have to multiply that by y minus y naught. And so we have just created is the equation of the plane tangent to our surface given by z is equal to our function of x and y at the point x naught, y naught, and z naught. So if we're interested in creating a tangent plane for one of our three-dimensional surfaces at a point x naught, y naught, and z naught, all we really need to construct that uh, tangent plane's equation is this formula and for our function to be uh, differentiable with respect to x and y at our point of interest. So what does it mean for a function to be differentiable at a point? Well, it means for all of its partial derivatives to be continuous at that point. And another kind of visual interpretation of that is a good way to think about differentiability in three-dimensional space is a function or a surface is differentiable at a point if we can create a tangent plane at that point where that tangent plane isn't doing anything crazy like pointing straight up or being vertical. All right, everyone, in this example, we are asked to find the plane tangent to the surface given by z is equal to 2x squared plus y squared at the point where x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, and z is equal to 3. And so the first thing we're going to need to make some progress in this example is the general equation for our tangent plane. And so remember, we can write the equation for our tangent plane as z is equal to z naught plus f sub x times x minus x naught plus f sub y times y minus y naught. Remember, z naught is just the value of our function at the point of interest, so that'd be z is equal to 3. f sub x and f sub y are the values of the first partial derivatives with respect to x and y at our point where x and y are equal to 1. 
And so now in order to use this general formula for the equation of a tangent plane, we have to find all the missing pieces, so x naught, y naught, z naught, as well as the value of the first partial derivatives at the point of interest. All right, so x naught, y naught, and z naught are just the values of the point we know our surface goes through, and that's the point 1, 1, 3. Sometimes we're just given the x and y values, like 1 and 1, and if we needed to find that z value if it was not given to us, well, then we could just plug x and y equals 1 into our equation for z to find that z is equal to 3. All right, so the next thing we need to find in order to construct our tangent planes equations are the partial derivatives with respect to x and y for the surface we are creating this tangent plane for. And so our surface is 2x squared plus y squared. So our function f of x comma y is going to be 2x squared plus y squared. Okay, so to help us find this first coefficient for our tangent planes equation, we have to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And well, we can differentiate this one pretty quickly. And what we're going to see is that partial derivative is going to be equal to 4x. And so I'm a little bit lazy with my notation here because this is not just the partial derivative with respect to x, it's the partial derivative with respect to x evaluated at our point of interest where we plug in x and y being equal to 1. And so, well, here we can plug in x equals 1. And what we're going to find out is f of x is going to be equal to, well, 4 times 1 is just 4. Okay, so now we have to repeat this process again, but with respect to y. So first we take the equation for our three-dimensional surface. That's 2x squared plus y squared. But now we are taking the partial derivative with respect to y. Now it's also pretty straightforward to do. And we just get 2y as the general partial derivative with respect to y for our function. But for our tangent planes equation, we do not need the general partial derivative. We need the partial derivative evaluated at the point of interest. So again, we're plugging in x and y being equal to 1 into our partial derivative to find this coefficient. And what we find is at our point of interest, the partial derivative of f with respect to y is just going to be equal to 2. Right? Plug in y equals 1, and we find that this is all equal to 2. So now we can put all this information together and construct the equation for our tangent plane at the point 1, 1, 3. So we have z is equal to z naught, which was 3. And then we're going to add to that the partial derivative of our function with respect to x at our point of interest, that f sub x value was 4. That's going to get multiplied by the quantity x minus x naught, where x naught is that x coordinate from our point of interest, so that'll look like x minus 1. Then we add a similar term, but for our y pieces, so the coefficient is going to be the partial derivative of f with respect to y evaluated at our point of interest. We found that value to be 2. Then it's going to get multiplied by the quantity y minus y naught, where our y naught value is 1. And so it's not necessary, but if we wanted to, we could expand the right hand side and collect like terms. So we'd have a 4x, a positive 2y, and then we have to combine all these constant terms together after we use the distributive property. So that would give us 3 plus a negative 4 plus a negative 2. And that would all add up to negative 3. So we could also write the equation of the tangent plane equivalently as z is equal to 4x plus 2y minus 3. And so now real quickly, just to verify that the function we created is the tangent plane, I want us to graph our surface on GeoGebra. So there is the graph of our surface, z is equal to 2x squared plus y squared. And then I want us to also graph our plane, z is equal to 4x plus 2y minus 3. And so now we can see when we zoom in at the point 1, 1, 3, our tangent plane is just touching our surface at this point. And if we think about traveling in the x direction or the y direction away from this point, our tangent plane is basically approximating how our function would be uh, traveling in those directions.